I'm so happy to be here today. Um, how many people saw the documentary when it came out, Root Cause? Anyone see it? Unfortunately, they took it off the air before I was able to actually view it. But this is something that I'm so glad is finally really coming to the forefront because there is a root cause stemming from fluoride, mercury fillings, and root canals that is truly making people sick. How many people use commercial oral care products? Raise a hand. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Okay, well, Listerine here. This is the number one seller, and I call this cancer in a bottle. You want to know why? Your mouth is the most vascular area of your entire body. So whatever you stick into your mouth, it bypasses your GI tract and goes directly into your cardiovascular system. So Listerine is 27% alcohol. That causes throat and mouth cancer. It has Paloxomer 407, which how many people know someone dealing with breast cancer? Paloxomer 407 causes breast cancer. It has dyes that are banned in other countries. It has methyl sacrolate, which one teaspoon of methyl sacrolate in its pure form would kill you. Okay, it has sodium saccharin in there, which is a known carcinogen. So you now see why I call it cancer in a bottle. This next one here is also very common. It's Crest Pro Health. It's cetyl pyridium chloride, or otherwise known as CPC, and it's also found in pesticide. Now you may be wondering, well, why is it that they're allowed to get away with putting these ingredients in our oral care products? And it's because they are considered cosmetics. So that's why they are allowed to put these kind of ingredients in your oral care products. So you need to really be looking at your ingredients. Who hasn't heard of fluoride? Every single time you go to the dentist, what are you asked? You want a fluoride treatment, right? Well, fluoride was actually the um, initial patent of it was for pesticide, but the FDA did not come into existence until 1938. So it was actually grandfathered in. Now in World War II, they started putting fluoridated water for use in the concentration camps. And that's because what fluoride does to the brain is it makes you docile. Did you know it's in Prozac? Fluoride is in Prozac, okay? Because of the effects of what it does to your brain. It calcifies your pineal gland. Um, it is just, it's actually a toxin, which is why it shows on your commercial toothpaste, harmful as swallowed contact poison control. That's why, okay? So I love when people tell me that I'm being a conspiracy theorist about fluoride. I actually purchased this bottle. See this little thing right here? It used to be that it showed as the skull and crossbones when you had something toxic, but they changed it. So it doesn't look as scary. There's no little Mr. Skull here. Now it's just an X with the word T-O-X on it. But I bought this off of Amazon, okay? It is a label poison. So no, I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. I'm being a label reader, which is what I encourage everybody to do. There's a real misnomer that fluoride is an essential nutrient. It is not. It's not like something such as calcium or another essential nutrient that you need. So it is absolutely a misnomer. It's a derivative of fluorine. Fluorine is one of the most reactive substances known to man. The fluoride that's in your water, by the way, is fluorosilicic acid, which is the byproduct from phosphate fertilizer industry. So if they didn't dump it in your water, do you know it would have to be labeled hazardous waste? Thank you very much. Um, so fluoride supplements have also never been approved by the FDA as safe or effective. Here's a quote from Dr. Dean Burke. He was from the National Cancer Institute. In point of fact, cancer or fluoride causes more human cancer death and causes it faster than any other chemical. There was a study that came out, I think it was a few years ago from uh, Harvard, I believe, on the effects of fluoride in your brain. It actually reduces your IQ. This graph was from a government website and it's gonna show you the acute effects and the chronic effects of fluoride. Acute, bottom line, death. Chronic effects, dental fluorosis, which I'm gonna show you a picture of in a minute, skeletal fluorosis. The reason why this is so important is because your teeth are the windows to your bones, okay? So if you are ingesting too much fluoride, which by the way, you can only have to the age of six before your teeth stop developing. So that's really when the damage is done is prior to the age of six years old, your 
getting too much fluoride in your system. But chronic effects, it can cause um, GI problems, kidney issues, birth defects, and cancer. This is a, a government slide. There's been uh, some more studies over in England over the past couple of years, and what they were doing was showing the cause of fluoridated water. And do you know that 30% of the people that were drinking the fluoridated water were actually having hypothyroidism? Women were 15 times more likely to develop an underactive thyroid from drinking the fluoridated water. A study published in Neurologia showed that the prolonged ingestion of fluoride may cause significant damage to health and particularly to your nervous system. Here's the picture. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is a picture of fluorosis. I want you guys to take a look at your kids' teeth when you go home. If you see these white striations on their teeth, that is fluorosis. There's different degrees of fluorosis. Look at how severe that is. Can you imagine what's going on in their skeletal system if their kid is a one? Soda contains 10 teaspoons of sugar and it takes three days for your body to come back to a natural pH of seven. So I want you to imagine a zipper from your chin all the way down and then put your organs in a vat of 2.5. What do you think is happening to your organs? Can they possibly sustain being in an acidic environment for a long period of time? The answer is no. So when your actual body pH drops below a 6.5, you are opening up the door to disease. So the uh, soda also increases your risk of obesity by 60%, increases the fat in your liver, can cause abdominal fat, insulin resistance, leptin resistance. It can be the leading cause of type two diabetes. And I know it can be addictive. So for people that do have a soda addiction, I would encourage you to go get some kombucha. I don't know if we have anyone selling kombucha here today or not, but kombucha, although it might be a little bit acidic when you drink it, it actually is alkalining to your body. So it's got probiotics, it's good for your liver, it's got B vitamins. So you just need to make a switch because I know we live in Florida, we would like something cold and fizzy. Really switch to kombucha. It might take a little getting used to, but I promise it's definitely worth it. So how do you get a cavity? Okay, so we've talked about our diet and everything that happens as far as our saliva is concerned, but actually inside of your enamel, which I don't know if you can see, there's a hard white line on this x-ray. You will never feel a cavity when it's in your enamel. I work in a dentist's office and I cannot tell you how many times people come in, oh, I lost my feeling about a year ago and now I'm, you know, my tooth is throbbing, their face is out to here. Well, yeah, they should have gone to the dentist because if you're preventing these things from happening, you're not gonna have a problem. So this person has a decay right there. It's this gray area. You're never gonna feel it when it's in your enamel. You're gonna feel it when it gets inside of the tooth because your tooth has a blood supply, so our teeth are alive. Our teeth are linked to organs in our body, okay? So you're going to have decay get in through the enamel, goes into the indentin, into the pulp chamber, and instead of it being just a $200 filling, it's a $2,000 problem because you didn't take care of it. So can our teeth be remineralized? Absolutely, they absolutely can be remineralized. What you need to be doing is changing your diet, okay? Um, brushing your teeth with an electric toothbrush at least twice a day, but you don't want to brush your teeth immediately after you eat because again, your body, the way it's designed, your saliva is working, okay? For 30 minutes, you do not want to brush your teeth after you eat, you need to wait 30 minutes. Floss the teeth that you want to keep. Let me say that again. Floss the teeth that you want to keep, okay? And I'm not talking those little cheater things. No, 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 okay? Those clean in between the teeth, but they do not go underneath the gum. If you really want to learn how to floss properly, please go to my YouTube channel, Simply Silver Mouthwash. I have videos, how to brush your teeth, how to floss, how to use a water pick, because I guarantee you, you stand in front of the mirror with your water pick, and it's going to blast all over your mirror, and your spouse will hate you, okay? So go onto my YouTube and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. But a water pick is really essential if you've got a lot of dental work in your mouth, you got crowns, bridges, fillings, um, you really need to be using a water pick. My favorite is the Hydrofloss because the Hydrofloss 
It has an ionic charge. So that means it's actually already killing the bacteria before it even touches you. So it's a little pricier, I admit, but if you're gonna make an investment in a water pick, I would recommend the Hydrofloss. Um, vitamin D, very essential because again, your teeth are the windows to your bones. Fish oil, black walnut hull, which black walnut hull is actually in my mouthwash. My husband had a crown um, on the lower right and I forced him to get his teeth cleaned. So <laughs> I was checking his teeth and I, I stuck underneath his crown. It was soft and sticky and the dentist came in and confirmed, yep, decay, we need to cut the crown off. We need to reprop the tooth. Well, he started using the mouthwash about two, three times a day. Within 90 days, he remineralized that tooth hard as a rock and this was years ago. So your teeth can be remineralized. Bone broth, organ meats, even grass-fed butter, which I forgot to put on there, but we use Kerrygold butter because it has lots of minerals in there that are fantastic for your teeth. So if you're probably over 40 or so, you have some silver fillings, right? Who has some silver fillings here? Okay, they're actually not silver. Do you know that? They're 50% mercury. Okay, that is the term is mercury. There is some silver in there. There's also some copper and tin and zinc, but it is mainly a mercury filling. According to the government, there is no safe level of mercury. Mercury in any form is poisonous. With mercury toxicity, uh, it's gonna affect your neurologic, your GI and your renal organ systems. Poisoning can result from mercury vapor inhalation. So this is the number one thing that happens is you go to a dentist, they wanna replace your cracked mercury filling, right? They drill it out. Well, at that point of them drilling it out, you are exposed to so much mercury because it wasn't done properly. I always recommend going to a biological dentist. Dr. Bem did my husband's years ago. Um, he actually had a root canal tooth. We went there, it was extracted properly. They immediately sent him to get an IV to have all of that flushed. I know it's expensive, okay? I know we have dental insurance. Insurance is a benefit, but we cannot let insurance dictate what you, what you really need for your health. So keep that in mind. But um, poisoning can also result from mercury ingestion, mercury injection, and absorption of mercury through the skin. So the history of mercury, um, it's actually, uh, called amalgam, which is an alloy of mercury, and it goes all the way back to the ancient times. Uh, the Romans used to send their prisoners out to work the mercury mines, because who cares if they drop dead? Um, ever hear of the term mad as a hatter? You know where that came from? That came from the men's hat, hat felting industry, because they were using mercuric nitrate to make men's hats. So it was actually banned in 1941 by the US government, because it was making them crazy. Here's a picture of the, um, can you all see this ugly mercury filling here? And then on this side, that's composite. That's what they replace the mercury fillings with. So when you have a mercury filling in your mouth, you are being exposed to every single day if you have mercury fillings in your mouth. Mercury is especially risky for the following groups. Children, women of childbearing age, breastfeeding infants, people with kidney problems, those that are genetically susceptible or have pre-existing neurological problems, people that are already exposed to other mercury sources, including dental professionals. Which by the way, when I had my twin girls, um, as you guys heard, I had um, one of my twins was really sickly. I took her to get tested and her levels of mercury were through the roof. And the, and the <laughs> practitioner looked at me and she goes, you know, it came from you, right? That's because I am breathing in the vapor in a dental office. They're drilling this stuff out all the time. So I am always being exposed. So I actually have to take things like once a week, I try and do like bentonite clay or something because it gets built up in my system as well. Um, also people with uh, hypersensitivities or allergies, signs of toxicity, nervousness or anxiety, irritability or mood changes, numbness, memory problems, uh, ADHD, depression, physical tremors, brain fog, thyroid dys dysfunction, Hashimoto's disease. Interesting, huh? More symptoms appear with increased mercury in the body, such as sometimes you'll even get a, like a yucky me metallic taste in your mouth, nausea, vomiting, lack of motor skills, even your inability to feel in your hands, your face, um, sometimes slurring of your, of your speech or even being able to walk straight, that can be signs of mercury toxicity. So 
so if you've had a mercury filling and say that it cracked and you started to get symptoms your dentist is going to recommend a what root canal right how many people have root canals so raise your hand oh raise your hand there oh I, yeah okay so root canals are just they're, they're so toxic. In fact, um, Dr. Weston A. Price did some really amazing groundbreaking research back in the 1900s. People that were having, whether it be a heart issue or something, what he would do is he'd extract the root canal tooth from the, the person and he would stick it underneath the skin of a rabbit. And do you know that that rabbit would develop the exact same symptoms that the host did? What does that tell you? So he was really developing some groundbreaking work on what is called a focal infection. So it's the root canal tooth and the relationship to your overall health. So when you get a root canal done, um, they can only remove 44% of the bacteria. And the way that they kill that bacteria, by the way, is with bleach. So they inject bleach right into your sulcus, okay? So that's what's uh, sterilizing the tooth, but it's not sterilized because all of your research has shown that in 100% of the time, there is still pathogenic bacteria underneath there. And this bacteria can stimulate inflammatory molecules, which is traveling through your body every single time. So here's our little tooth guy. Okay, so what happens is you've got three or four root or canals inside of your tooth. Your tooth is alive. So they go in, they take out your blood supply. So now your tooth is a dead tooth. They're gonna remove the three or four canals, remove that blood supply. They pack it with something called gutta percha and oh, you're good, okay? The problem is they've only treated the three or four canals. You have 3,000, 3,000 accessory canals to every single tooth. That's why it's impossible to get rid of all of that bacteria. It's traveling through your body every single time you're chewing um, constantly. So root canals are linked to heart disease, kidney disease, arthritis, joint, rheumatic diseases, even ALS and MS, breast cancer, autoimmune disease like lupus and more. Also thyroid disease if you had a root canal after you developed your symptoms. So dentists, that speak out against root canals bring up these three main points that there's no way to completely remove all the dead tissue from the tooth there's no way to sterilize the tooth thus leaving bacteria there and that the materials used to fill the hollowed out tooth leak and cause problems downstream but then then of course you do your research and the uh, endodontic association is going to say oh well it's fine your immune system will be fine enough of the bacteria got removed there's no other suitable options that's what you're gonna hear. But again, follow the money trail. You've got an entire profession that does this. So they're going to, of course, tell you, oh, it's safe. And by the way, they're gonna say it's a success if it lasted eight years. I have been doing this for 25 years and I cannot even begin to tell you that a root canal fails more often than not because you're not meant to have something dead stay inside your body, it will fail. So root canal bacteria is linked to cancer hardening of the arteries, Alzheimer's disease because of the ability to create inflammation, diabetes and poor blood sugar control. Also oral cancer, that's another thing. So I don't want you to get freaked out if you are told you need to have a root canal. You do have options. First of all, take control of your health. I know we wear the white coats, we can be very intimidating, but you do not have to make a decision right then and there. Please do your research, okay? Oh, but we're gonna offer you 20% off, you do it today. <laughs> I know, because we've done it before. Um, so you really need to determine your goals for your teeth. And hopefully, hopefully your, your goal is to keep your teeth. We don't like amputating teeth. Yes, we can amputate. We can chop your hand off and give you a prosthetic. We can make you dentures but it's an entire new set of problems because if you get dentures, your chewing force goes down to 30%. Um, it's an entire new set of problems. I mean, do you see what happens to people's faces? It's horrible. You don't talk the same, you don't look the same. So you definitely wanna keep your teeth. So determine your goals for your teeth. Prevention is key. Always ask questions and find out which tooth uh, replacement option works for you. So you've got a dental bridge. Anyone here have a bridge? Okay, 
So there's a little bit of work involved in keeping it clean. You gotta get a water pick, you gotta floss underneath it, but it is fixed. That means it does not come out of your mouth. Okay, so this is a very good option. In fact, when my husband had that root canal tooth removed, that's what we did is we gave him a bridge. You can also do a partial denture. This is removable. It's your least expensive option, but do keep in mind because it is removable, if it's on the top of your mouth, it can affect your taste and everything like that, but at least it'll keep everything in your mouth stable because what you don't wanna do is have teeth pulled and then not put something back. You're gonna end up losing more teeth, it's worse. And then implants. Okay, zirconia implants are truly the safest thing that you can use because you do not want to be putting titanium so close to your brain. We are electrical beings, and when you, when you put titanium right inside your head, it's going to affect your frequency. So zirconia implants are the safest thing that you can do. So the other thing that really does affect our health that most people are not paying attention to, unfortunately, is gum disease. So gum disease really affects our overall health because whatever you stick into your mouth, like I've explained, goes into the rest of your body. Well, so does this bacteria, okay? Bacteria that causes gum disease causes heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, um, pancreatic cancer, colorectal cancer, Alzheimer's, and dementia. So what you have here is you've got your tooth and this little instrument here, this is called a probe. Hopefully your hygienist is good and she's probing and checking your numbers. Ones, twos, and threes are good. You get fours, five, sixes, that's a serious problem. You're now losing attachment. This is actually a picture of a patient of mine. I don't know if you guys can see here. You see these big bumps coming off the tooth? Can you all see that? Okay, well trust me, there's giant barnacles underneath here, okay? And what happens is plaque it actually mineralizes through your saliva into tartar. And it can be so dense that it's showing up on an x-ray. Then that tartar releases bacteria that eats your bone away. Bugs are eating your bone. That's exactly what's happening. You have parasites eating away at your jawbone. I have worked on somebody like this. It's disgusting. There's been a couple of times that I literally could not clean their teeth because the only thing left holding their teeth in place was all the tartar buildup. I mean, that's how bad it is because all the bone was rotten. Ever talk to somebody whose breath just knocks you over, right? Okay, she works over at the Walmart. Oh my gosh, she speaks to me and I about, I, I about passed out. It's horrible, but yes, it's like a dead body is inside of their mouth. It's, it's, it's nasty. Okay, so the reason why this is serious is because it can cause cancer and women especially are really affected. So again, there's not a magic fence in your body. If you have disease in your mouth, you have systemic disease, okay? So this is why you wanna definitely prevent the disease from happening in the first place. Now in my office, we do what's called a hain test. So we actually culture the bacteria that's underneath that gum and we send it off to a lab because there's 11 bacteria that cause your bone to deteriorate. And your bone, that's the foundation for your teeth. It's like, it's like a house that gets a sinkhole. You don't care about wallpapering it. You don't care about painting it if you've got a sinkhole problem, right? You have fixed the foundation. That is so important. So in my office, we actually screen it. And then um, here's the bacteria. I actually give all of my patients a list and I highlight which ones they tested positive for. So what can you do? You can do some vitamin therapy. I actually created a line of vitamins specifically for people with gum disease and because it also helps their heart. So CoQ10, if you have gum disease, you are lacking CoQ10 in your body. What CoQ10 does is it helps your body fight off bacteria on a microcellular level. Also vitamin C, because our diets are so crappy, we are not getting what we need. So vitamin C shows up first place in the mouth with excessive bleeding. Vitamin C is gonna help you with your collagen production and everything that you need to keep your gums nice and tight and healthy. Also, vitamin B. Vitamin B is great for wound healing. It helps prevent gum disease. Vitamin D, that's another thing I keep talking about because we're all lacking vitamin D in our body. So keeping your vitamin D levels optimum is gonna keep your, your bone, your jawbone healthy. 
pomegranate, I love pomegranate. Pomegranate is amazing. It actually um, really helps people that have congestive heart failure, high blood pressure. It improves your circulation. It helps with overall inflammation, um, can lower the chance of even getting a cavity and gum disease and probiotics. Because as Dr. Axe and everyone else has been talking today about your gut health. So making sure that your gut health is super healthy is, is really key to your immune system. EPA, DHA, this again just helps uh, with gum disease and then my vitamin line. <clears throat> and then colloidal silver, I know you guys are familiar with colloidal silver, but I have a colloidal silver line of oral care products. I have a mouthwash, I have a toothpaste, I have a breast spray. Um, I love my mouthwash because it's the only one on the market with something called dragon's blood in it. I know that's kind of like a scary term. It's not, not blood, I promise. It's the sap from the Amazon's dragon tree. Okay, so if you cut yourself and you put this sap on your skin, it actually acts like a coagulant, so it stops the bleeding. So my mouthwash contains that. Um, there's a picture, isn't it cute? And then um, my toothpaste, I'm one of the top 15 that has a low abrasive uh, ranking. So you wanna do your research on the toothpaste that you're using. You absolutely, please, 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 do not use activated charcoal, bentonite clay, hydrated silica, glycerin, TEA, or anything with car car carganine, and however the heck you say that, okay? Because that is terrible for your teeth. My toothpaste is the only one on the market that contains arginine, that contains baking soda, colloidal silver. It's totally safe for your teeth. It's not gonna abrade your teeth. It won't make them yellow. It'll make them pretty and white. But, um, you know, all of my products are definitely formulated with you guys in mind because I've been doing this for so long. I know what works and I know what doesn't work. So if you guys um, take away one thing from me today, it's to please be your own health advocate. Please do your research on things even as simple as your oral care products. And if you guys have any questions, um, come see me at my table, okay? Thank you for your time. was amazing, wasn't it? Did you learn a lot? Yes. You're going to have a storm at your table. Heather, you really are. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay, moving on here. Remember when Dr. Axe so elegantly said, call your friends and tell them to get their butts over here? <laughs> it's time. It's time. I hope you did call some friends because Dr. Jockers is in the house. Woohoo! <laughs> and he's ready. Okay, so Dr. David Jockers is a doctor of natural medicine, a functional nutritionist, and a corrective care chiropractor. He currently owns and operates Exodus Health Center in Kennesaw, Georgia, and runs one of the hottest natural health websites, drjockers.com. He's gotten over 1 million monthly visitors, and his work has been seen on popular media, such as Dr. Oz, ever heard of him? Yes. Oh, you have, uh-huh. And the Hallmark Home and Family. Dr. Jockers is the author of the best-selling book, The Keto Metabolic Breakthrough by Victory Belt Pub Publishing, and is a world-renowned expert in the area of ketosis, fasting, and the ketogenic diet. He is the p developer of the best-selling Navigating the Ketogenic Diet e-course and the host of the popular Keto Edge Summit and the Fasting Transformation Summit. You think he's busy? You think he's got some knowledge? Dr. Jockers lives in Canton, Georgia with his wife, Angel, and his twin boys, David and Joshua, and his daughter, Joyful. You know what his favorite thing to do is? Are you ready? Dancing to work.